Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. Today I'm back with a review of an incredibly expensive tube microphone. Tube, tube microphone. I just turned into Jack Black. <laughs> Chilo. <laughs> I think he actually uses one of these. But the microphone we're reviewing is the Manly Reference Cardioid. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $3,300. That's a lot of money. I will throw some links in the description down below, and if you are going to buy this microphone, I would love you if you clicked on one of those affiliate links. Now with the e-bagging out of the way for the majority of this review, I will be running directly into the Focusrite 18i20 second gen, gain set at around 1030, recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I will likely have to boost it a little bit in post, so, sh sh so check the shoobly shoo! Check the doobly-doo to see what a diddly did. And before you leave an angry comment because I'm running this into the focus right, later in the video I run it through the Universal Audio X8 as well as a couple outboard preamps so you can hear it in a better case scenario. And I will also upload a higher resolution recording to podcastage.com, link in the description. And now let's go ahead and talk about what comes in the box. But you know I can't throw this because I would break everything in the room, including my soul. So I will throw the box that the replacement tubes came in. I'm not angry that I had to get replacement tubes multiple times. <laughs> First off, everything comes in this amazing storage box. You will, of course, get the microphone, which already has the shock mount installed, a rotating mounting bracket to mount this to a microphone stand, a leather dust cover to keep dust from getting on the microphone's diaphragm. You'll get an extremely long cable to connect the microphone to the power supply. You'll get the power supply itself, as well as the power cable to power the power supply, and a little bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, I don't have any complaints about the microphone's build or the power supply. The microphone's body is going to be all metal. It has a metal mesh grill, which does have a bit of give to it, so I'm not going to press on it too hard. The microphone comes pre-installed on this really sturdy metal shock mount. On the front bottom of the microphone, there is a negative 10 dB switch. As we move around the microphone, there are no other dials or switches. But on the bottom, you will find the 6-pin XLR port to connect this to the power supply. Then on the power supply, it is made all out of metal. The XLR ports both feel really nice with no wobble outside of the ordinary. You have a power switch which has a nice click to it. And if it matters to you, it states that the microphone is designed and handcrafted in the USA. Then as far as the specifications, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, big surprise there, a frequency response of 10 hertz to 30 kilohertz, a sensitivity of approximately negative 35 dB, a max SPL of 150 dB, an impedance of 250 ohms, and the microphone that I'm using uses a 12 AT7 or 6072 tube, but they now use a 12 AX7 or 7025 EH. Now I am spinning around the Manly Reference Cardio to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around the microphone to 180 degrees, here's the rear of the mic. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, here we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. I am absolutely going to hate myself for doing this, but now let's go ahead and test the plosive rejection of this $3,300 microphone. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the Manly Reference Cardio to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing, and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about six inches off of the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth, and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about one foot away from the microphone. Now I'm about two feet away from the microphone. And now I am about four feet away from the Manly Reference Cardioid. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, because I know this microphone is big in the gaming community, I am typing on the sad W and spacebar keys. Now here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. 
And now, here is how the manly reference cardioid sounds in a completely untreated room. And now, in order to see how effective the shock mount is, I'll go ahead and tap on my desk to see how much of that noise it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. And now because I'm annoying and I want to be thorough, I'm going to tap on the shock mount and the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now we're doing a quick spoken word comparison of the reference cardioid running into two higher end outboard preamps, the first one being the Warm Audio WA73EQ, gain set at 35 dB, no EQ is engaged. Second is the Universal Audio LA610 Mark II, no compression, no limiting being done, no EQ either. Gain is set at plus 5, so we're getting a little bit of tube coloration. And the level is set at 2.5. Both preamps are then running line level at plus 4 dBU into the Universal Audio X8, recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz. And I think that's all the information you need. And to conclude this segment, here is a statement that will be repeated running through both preamps, and it will be the exact same performance. And to conclude this segment, here is a statement that will be repeated running through both preamps, and it will be the exact same performance. And now, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that we're reviewing and a couple other microphones on the market so we can see how it compares sound-wise and how it stacks up against the competition. We'll start on the microphone that we're reviewing. This is the Manly Reference Cardioid, six inches away. Gain at 26 dB on the Universal Audio X8, 24-bit 48 kilohertz, and here is how it sounds. Now I am on the newer NW700. This costs around $25. I am six inches off. My gain is set at 30 dB. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted in post, and here is how it sounds. Let's jump back to the Manly. Back on the Manly Reference Cardioid, nothing has changed, and here's how it sounds. Let's jump to another microphone. Now I am on the Audio-Technica AT2020. This costs around $100. Six inches off, my gain was increased to 38 dB, and here's how it sounds. Let's jump and do some more comparisons. We have a lot more to go, so I won't ramble on. This is the Manly Reference Cardioid. Let's jump to another mic and do another comparison. Now I am on the neat King B version 2. This costs around $170. Six inches off, gain set at 33 dB, and here is how it sounds. Let's jump back to the Manly. Back again for a fourth comparison. This is the Manly Reference Cardioid. Check the lower third. Let's jump to the next mic. Now I am on the Rode NT1, which goes for around $270. Six inches off, gain set at 34 dB, and here is how this compares to the reference cardioid. Let's jump back to the reference cardioid and do a lot more of these things. Okay, this is the manly reference cardioid again. Nothing has changed. Six inches, gain at 26 dB. Let's hear another comparison. Now I am on the Lewitt LCT440 Pure or Pro. This goes for around $270. Six inches off, gain set at 34 dB. And here is what a relatively affordable, very bright microphone sounds like compared to a very expensive tube bright microphone. Let's jump back to the Manly and do a bunch more comparisons. Would you believe me if I told you we were back on the Manly Reference Cardioid because we are? This is what it still sounds like. Nothing has changed. Next microphone. Now we have jumped up in price quite a bit to the Neumann TLM-103. This costs around $1,200. I am six inches off. My gain is set at 36 dB. And here is how this sounds compared to a microphone that's about three times the price. Solid state versus tube. Let's do more. I don't know how many of these we have done, but I think we have four or five more to go. This is the reference cardioid. Let's hear another reference to a different microphone. 
Now we are on the SE Electronics Gemini 2. This costs around $1,600. I am 6 inches off. My gain is set at 33 dB. No pad, no high pass filter. And this is how it sounds compared to another very bright microphone and the Manly Reference Cardioid. Let's do more comparisons. Who knows how many of these we have done, but this is the Manly Reference Cardioid and words and words and words, and let's hear words on words and words, 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 words. Now we are on the Telefunken TF51, six inches off, gain set at 36 dB. This costs around $1,900. Cardioid polar pattern, no filters engaged. And here is how this compares to the Manly Reference Cardioid. Let's do a couple more, I think, I don't know. Back on the Manly Reference Cardioid again, 6 inches off, 26 dB of gain, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz on the Universal Audio X8. Next, microphone. Now I am on the Lewitt LCT1040, 6 inches off, gain set at 36 dB, cardioid polar pattern, 100% tube voicing, with the tube voicing set to clear. This costs around $3,600, and here is how it sounds compared to the Manly Reference Cardioid. Let's do a couple more, I think. Back on the Manly Reference Cardioid, I think we have one or two more to go. Here's what this sounds like. Let's hear another microphone. Now we are on the Neumann U87AI. Hello, Neumann. I am on the Cardioid mode. No pad, no filters engaged. This microphone costs around $3,700. Six inches off, gain set at 32 dB. And here is how this sounds. Let's jump back to the Manly, and I think we just have one more to go. Guess what it's going to be? I think you all know what the final microphone is going to be, but first, this is the Manly Reference Cardioid. Let's jump to the final mic. And finally, we are on the Neumann U67 reissue. Hello, Neumann. Six inches off, gain set at 36 dB, cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filters, and this costs around $7,500. It just keeps getting more expensive. But here is how it sounds compared to the Manly Reference Cardioid, and I don't have any more expensive microphones, so this is it. This is the end of the comparisons. Let me know in the comments down below which was your favorite, the Manly Reference Cardioid or one of the others. Now let's jump to the music test. <laughs> Mic to test today, and I forgot all the words that I will need to say. It's been so long since I've reviewed a microphone. I don't know what I say. I don't know what I do. I don't know what comes next. Conclusion time? Is it the conclusion next? I don't know. Is for me? Ew, I hated that. <laughs> Let's do whatever's next. I don't know. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, past Bandrew, not so fast. I have customer service experience with Manly because of this microphone, and I just want to share that journey with you. I bought this microphone around April or May 2020, used it for a couple of weeks, and then when I listened a bit more critically, I started to notice a bit of crackling in the recording. If I can find a recording, I will include a sample of it right here in the video. And at that time, I contacted Manly, and the communication was a little bit lackluster. I will give them a pass there because this was a month and a half after the whole COVID lockdown thing started. So I think a lot of companies didn't know what they were doing. So I didn't have the best communication there. But eventually, the CEO chimed in because I had not gotten a response and told the customer service people, the department, hey, respond to this person. 
Within a week or two, I got a replacement tube to see if that would resolve the issue. Unfortunately, it didn't. So then I had to pay out of pocket to ship the microphone back to Manly so they could repair it. I think it took one, one and a half months before I got the repaired microphone back. The crackling issue did get resolved, but I found that this microphone is noisier than even something like the AT2020, which has a 20 dBA self noise. And I did also have to order a couple of extra tubes for this microphone because the tubes are only guaranteed to work for about six months. And that concludes my customer service experience with Manly. Was I disappointed to get a lemon? Obviously, I spent $3,000 on a microphone. I want a functioning one. Was the communication subpar? Yes, but it was right at the start of COVID, so nobody knew what was happening. It was confusing for everybody, so I give them a pass there as well. And I guess at the end of that experience, I don't have anything negative to say about the company, but I am left a bit disappointed with the noise performance of this microphone. All right, the Manly Reference Cardioid is a hyper detailed microphone that picks up everything that you put in front of it, off to the sides of it, and a little bit behind it. <laughs> But first up, as far as pros, it has to be that the microphone is hyper detailed. If you're looking at this microphone, that is probably why you were looking at it, because it does capture every detail, every articulation so incredibly clearly, so incredibly realistically. That's why you're looking at it. Secondly, the shock mount, absolutely amazing and effective. And third, made in the USA. I always love to see that. Really cool. And then as far as cons, number one, this is a hyper detailed microphone. This is not going to be doing your voice any favors. It captures exactly what you put in front of it in hyper detail. If you have the wrong voice for this microphone, the recording can become very grating and very unpleasant very quickly, especially over long sessions. I should know because this microphone does not flatter my voice. My podcast with this microphone, not necessarily pleasing to listen to. Secondly, the microphone doesn't reject that much background noise. So if you're in an untreated space or if you have unnecessary background noise going on, the microphone is going to pick that up. This could also be a good thing if you're in an amazing room. It's going to capture all that character and reverb coming in. And finally, you know what my last con is going to be. The self noise of this microphone for me is just a little bit too high. And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone? On the electric guitar, I wasn't a big fan of it. I just think there's too much high-end detail and information. That could be mainly because I record high-gain guitar. If you're recording a darker sounding guitar or a clean guitar and you want a lot of brilliance to it, I think this could work. But for me, I just wasn't a big fan of it. Next up on the acoustic, I think this thing sounds great. There is a bit of weight in the low end. The mids are pretty neutral. It doesn't sound scoop, doesn't sound forward, doesn't sound over boosted. But the main thing that you hear on the acoustic is that detail, that brilliance, that liveliness, that excitement and the upper frequencies. I think it handles that so incredibly well. And I really liked how it sounded on the acoustic. Next up for singing, I think that might be my favorite application for this microphone. In the low end, you do have a bit of weight to it. Chances are you're going to roll that off. The mids doesn't over boost, doesn't sound nasally, really a nice sounding mid section. But then you get to the top end. That's really where this thing shines. It makes the vocals so articulate, so detailed, so bright, so airy, but it doesn't come across brittle. It doesn't come across sibilant, and it really helps the vocals stand out amongst a mix. Really loved this thing for singing vocals. And lastly, for spoken word, I'm not the biggest fan of this microphone for that application. If you have a super bassy voice, that boost in the upper frequencies will really sound great on you. I've heard people with really deep and bassy voices sound outstanding on this microphone. But if you have a higher pitched male voice like mine, I think that upper end can get a bit grating, especially over long sessions, especially over podcasts audiobooks, anything like that. I just don't think the top end is the most flattering on voices like mine or similar to mine. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Manly Reference Cardioid? For some people, yes. For others, no. 
If you don't have a need for a super low noise recording and you like that really bright, hyper detailed sound, then yes, I would recommend it. It does that and it does it well. I think a lot of the people who are going to be looking at this are going to be music studios or those who are producing music because it does sound so bright and brilliant for pop vocals, really works well for that acoustic, outstanding, and if that's what you're looking for a microphone to accomplish, really does that well. But on the other hand, if you are looking for a microphone to get a super low noise recording, or if you're looking for a microphone to reject a lot of background noise, or if you're in an untreated space and you need your microphone to help you reject that out, I would not recommend this mic because it doesn't do any of that well. High noise, bad at rejecting sounds from the sides and the rear, really unforgiving or forgiving polar pattern depending on how you look at it. All right, that is all that I've got for you today. I know it's crazy. It took me two years to get around to reviewing this, but I was really ticked off about getting a lemon and having to ship it back and get it repaired and getting multiple tubes, and I didn't want my emotions to impact my review. I have gotten far enough away from those events that I could do it and not have that fury come up and impact how I think of the microphone and how I present it. That's why it really took two years, and I had a lot of other stuff to do too, but <laughs> that's why it took two years. But if you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, hated it, big old thumbs down, want more videos, subscribe, click that logo in the description, no, down below me, the little thing says podcasters, click that, click subscribe, and then a the little bell icon, do that. Hang out in the Discord server, podcastage.com slash Discord, talk about microphones and audio all day long, how tight is that? And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button or going to patreon.com slash podcastage and joining at the $5 tier or higher really does help me continue to bring you these video. Why am I talking? It helps me continue to bring you these videos, especially of $3,300 microphones because I'm never going to earn my money back from this. This is a stupid way to spend $3,000. Stupid. Stupid way. I appreciate you all watching. I appreciate you listening. I love you. You are the greatest human being in this world. I love you. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Ah, ah, ah. Bippity-boppity. Boop.